Hello all and welcome to another video. Today I'm doing a portrait study of my friend Sunny using my Mia gouache set. I really like this gouache, it's really fun to paint with. So Sunny has her own YouTube channel, she's a vlogger. I met her at my day job and well I have to say that she's one of the sharpest people I know. Her insight about things is just amazing. I wish I could see half the stuff she figures out. She's moved away now so we don't see each other much. We used to go for lunch together every Friday, but now we can't and I miss her so much. So thank you Sunny for letting me use your photo as reference image. I link her channel in the description below. Okay, so I will explain a little bit about my process as we go. This is not a tutorial, I'm learning here myself. And one of the main things I really learned doing this was to keep going and push through the ugly stage because it's worth it. So I started by mixing and laying in the color for the background. It was a bit darker than I wanted though and light colors do dry darker in gouache so I decided to lighten it up by just adding white directly on the paper. You can do a lot of mixing on the paper itself with gouache, especially since it reactivates really easily. My goal was to get a nice coat of color that would match what I wanted and just leave it. The next step was to lay in the darkest shadows of the piece. My palette is off screen, but I mixed some burnt umber and Prussian blue for this in order to get it dark without using black. I then tackled the face. I'm not very experienced with painting darker skin tones, as I've mentioned in a previous video, so I was a bit hesitant and wasn't really sure where to start. So I went for the mid shadows using a pure burnt sienna because it had the right value and this color is a sort of reddish brown that suited the skin well. The main colors I used for the skin were burnt sienna, burnt umber and yellow ochre. I lightened with some white as needed, but I also used the yellow ochre as well. After starting with the mid shadows, I went in with the burnt umber for the darker shadows on her neck. I think that especially for skin tones, you want to stay away from black as much as possible because it will make the skin look ashy. So if you're painting the undead, it might be something you want, but on the living person, it's probably not the best look. Now, because of the drying shift, when painting, you want to mix enough of your color because it will be really difficult to match afterwards. So I did that and actually remembered to paint her hand at the same time as her face in order to match the tones. I sort of just dove right in here to block a lot of the color on her face with a mix of burnt sienna lightened with yellow ochre to paint the lighter base tones. And I used yellow ochre because I wanted to reflect the yellowish undertone I could see in the reference photo. And of course the hand gets the same treatment. It's very splotchy at this stage and I did a little bit of blending, but I think mostly the problem I was having here was that I was diluting the paint too much compared with the previous colors on the same layer and the paints weren't completely opaque to begin with, so it's not a smooth layer of paint at all. Really, I need to practice being more consistent with my paint uh, uh, consistency on the same layer. We also need to remember that you can layer thicker paint on top of thinner paint, but it's really hard to do it the other way around because gouache reactivates so easily. Thank you. 
Here I'm trying to deepen the shadows on the face a little. I'm doing a lot of work that I think might be unnecessary if I were more confident with mixing color. But I'll get there eventually. Uh, practice does help. So on the bottom of the arm you can see it's lighter because the light bounces off her white top and reflects. The top is unpainted right now but it is white and I actually left it for last because I wanted to get the face and skin properly done first. I'm filling in the whites of the eyes because the whites are never actually really white. There's always at least some shadow on them and some tinting. So here I'm using a color close to the background color because it's light enough and it pulls things together. Now for the lips, I introduced some purple into the mix because she has some purplish tones there. I used just a little bit though because we don't want it to overpower everything. She's not actually wearing purple lipstick. So one thing that I did was to refer to the video preview a couple of times to see what I was missing. It does give a nice fresh perspective to see it from another angle or through a filter. You can do that by just snapping a work in progress shot with your phone or something to get an overview of your work because uh, when your nose is in your painting you can't really see stuff clearly anymore at some point. So here I'm adding more to the shadows and it sort of reminds me of when I was studying color theory in animation school. My teacher kept saying I was so dramatic because I added a lot of darks to the practice paintings and it might be true, but I find deep shadows so very satisfying. So at this point I decided to leave the face alone for a bit and get to the hair. Her hair is really textured and just learning to paint that would be a whole other video so I decided to simplify it and just block in the general values. I took the mixture of burnt umber and Prussian blue that I had used for the deepest shadows and added some white to get this desaturated blue tone for the mid and highlights. I'm still using some slightly wobbly brush strokes for the edges to hint at the texture though. Come to think about it, even with smooth straight hair, I tend to paint it in blocks instead of doing the hair texture. I guess it's just something that I like doing. Alright, and now back to the face with a tiny brush to add some details.
So I did do my best to smooth out the paint strokes, but I don't think you can get completely smooth blends here. This is not oil paints and I don't think it's necessary. I think the important thing is uh, have the texture look intentional rather than splotchy. I did have a couple of instances of lifting too much paint when trying to blend, but then I added more paint on top. Uh, this happens when you don't wait for the paint to dry before applying the next layer. The bottom layer reactivates and lifts. And yes, painting the white top. I did cover everything with the titanium white paint and I decided to shade using the yellow ochre uh, mainly because uh, blue shadows wouldn't fit with this uh, background and the overall tone of the painting. So I used the yellow ochre mixed with a bit of um, burnt sienna or burnt umber I think and I put in the shadows a bit darker than needed and then as I filled the rest of the sweater with titanium white I used it to soften those shadows. And lastly, I went in with my tiniest brush and white paint to add some extra highlights and all the fuzzies on the sweater. And that's pretty much it, I think. I could have spent much longer working on this, but I think it looked pretty good at this stage and I could leave it like that. Oh yeah, I uh, did go in with a little bit of black at the end just to deepen some of the shadows as much as possible and smooth out and correct the face shape. And that's it! Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that maybe it helped you a little. I know I learned a bunch from this, so if you did too, please like, subscribe if you haven't already, click the notification bell and maybe share this with some friends. Oh, and also go check out Sunny's channel, which I will link in the description box below. You'll find links there to my other social media as well as my Patreon. So thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.